The Soviet Su-100P is a Soviet 100mm self-propelled howitzer which was designed to suppress and destroy enemy firing positions, engage enemy armored vehicles, as well as conduct aerial denial and counter-battery tasks. It was also the main competitor of the Object 416, which was a prototype of a low-profile tank destroyer. Both the Su-100P and the Object 416 never made it beyond the prototype stage. However, since we got the Su-100P in War Thunder in the Soviet tech tree, and it's also a very good vehicle to play, I decided to make a video about it. So hello and welcome to the Bobby and Tanks YouTube channel and enjoy this video. Now first of all, the Su-100P is not a second world war vehicle. I'm saying this because now in the gameplay, you will see me fighting world war 2 vehicles. That's just because Gaijin put the tank in this BR. The Su-100P was designed between 1947 and 1950 and was accepted into service in 1955. After World War II, the Soviets planned to design a new anti-tank and assault gun to destroy armored vehicles with direct fire. At that time, countries in Europe and the US started developing artillery which could fire from closed positions. Throughout time, these artillery started replacing towed guns in their roles. In the following conflicts, the importance of self-propelled artillery became more and more apparent. The Soviet army replaced their towed guns with self-propelled artillery as well, and they were good because they had good sighting adaptations to fire from closed positions. But there was still one issue. The gun elevation of the barrel of the self-propelled artillery was only about 15 to 20 degrees, which was not a lot. This decreased the performance of self-propelled artillery by a lot, compared to towed guns which didn't have this problem. So the Soviets wanted a solution to that problem. Therefore, the Soviet Aircraft Design Bureau, OKB-3, under the command of Lev Gorlitsky, prepared two projects to create the new artillery while utilizing their experiences from the Second World War on the Eastern Front. The design of the new artillery Su-100P was mainly handled by OKB-3, while the D-10 gun was developed separately by OKB-9. In fall 1948, the Su-100P together with another experimental howitzer Su-152G underwent factory testing in which it chose to have several problems such as an unreliable lifting mechanism and insufficient stability of the gun when firing. In October 1949, the Su-100P took part in state trials together with the Su-152G and the Su-152P. These trials revealed that there were flaws in the chassis of the Su-100P. So to eliminate these flaws, the Soviets got to work and approved the chassis which continued until June 1955. After that, the Su-100P and the Su-152G were accepted into service by the Soviet army. Good news, right? Well, now comes the joy killer. Before the Su-100P had the chance to enter mass production, Khrushchev, who was the first secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, cancelled most of the work on self-propelled guns. And that is why throughout those years only one Su-100P was produced. This one and only Su-100P found its resting place in the Kombinka Tank Museum in Russia. Now we looked at the history of the Su-100P. So let's talk more about the tank itself. The Su-100P has an open turret mounted on the hull, and for the crew not to get wet or sick in bad weather conditions, the combat compartment could be covered with a canopy. The hull of the artillery is divided into three compartments. There is the power compartment, the driving compartment and the combat compartment. The engine and transmissions which are located at the front right of the vehicle form the power compartment. On the front left, next to the engine is where the driver is located, which forms the driving compartment. Now in the middle of the vehicle is the combat compartment, which is where all the fun stuff happens. The combat compartment has a box-shaped turret, which houses a 100mm gun. In total, the vehicle is occupied by a crew of 4 people. The hull armor is 25mm thick, while the turret armor is 15mm thick. When it comes to the armament, the Su-100P has a D-50, D-10 100mm gun, which was developed by a team led by Fyodor Petrov in the design bureau of plant number no. 9 in 1947. It can fire armor piercing rounds as well as high explosive fragmentation shells. The vehicle can hold a total of 50 shells. The gun had a traverse range of 143 degrees to either the left or the right, and the maximum elevation range was from minus 4 to plus 37 degrees. The CIS-3 panoramic sight was used when firing from a closed position, while the OP-2 telescopic sight was used to aim the gun during direct firing. Anyways, that was all I had to say for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.
If you think I said anything that is not right or you think I should have added any additional information to this video, please let me know in the comments and share your knowledge. Besides that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.